Welcome back. I am Multimedior. This is my introduction to one of the new uh, Max 2013 uh, decks that's uh, coming in the, um, which is upcoming in the DLC we will see on Wednesday, November the 7th. It is uh, called Sky and... Wow, that's pretty bad of me. Let me see what did I... I, I didn't name it, by the way. It's called Sky and Scale, and it uh, deals with the Simic uh, Guild mechanic, or the Simic Guild, um, which is basically a a guild of uh, um, biology-oriented um, uh, experimenters, researchers, and, and uh, wizards, and so on, that uh, try to create new life and... Uh, make the perfect beings and so to speak sometimes they it just gets out of control for them and uh the closest uh, closest thing we've seen to this in uh, dig digital magic is um the ancient depth deck from last year which was more concentrated around the um, uh what's it called wow i really can't rem remember anything huh uh ulu Ulamok, yeah, the Eldrassi, yeah, it was a very Eldrassi heavy deck, but the reason I put up the Simic Guild Mage here was not to show you the first card of the deck, it was to show you first of all that we're talking about the Simic uh, deck that we'll see, um, Sky and Scale is the name, ding ding, uh, but it is to show you what we will not see in the deck, and while we did see the guild mechanic of uh, of the original Boris deck uh, pre-Return uh, to Ravnica, or the original guild mechanic of the, the, the Boris guild pre-Return to Ravnica, or the, the Radiance guild mechanic, we're not going to see the Graft guild mechanic, which is basically like you have a lot of creatures that have the Graft ab uh, ability, which means that uh, they're uh, they're zero zeros and they come in with uh, a bunch of uh, plus one plus one uh, counters and every time a new creature comes in you are able to uh, move some of those counters from the uh, the creature with the, the graft ability onto a new creature so basically you can build your quote unquote uh, perfect creature in that sense uh, and uh, the Simic Guild Mage had the f this ability where for two mana you could move one plus one plus counter from target creature onto another target creature. So we're not going to see a lot of that. We're certainly not going to see the Graft Guild mechanic, which is a shame. Um, but we will see the following. We will see a lot of weird and wild and wonderful creatures and uh, some pretty interesting effects. I've, um, I should also mention that... Um, and and thank uh, Wingspan TT from Top Tier Tactics for uh, uh, giving me a heads up uh, essentially to to his uh, article where he introduces the deck, um, uh, the the two different decks. They haven't been confirmed by Wizards, but um, uh, I consider Top Tier Tactic a pretty reliant, uh, reliable source because they are pretty pretty much uh, on point with their predictions and with their information um every time they they put something out there is a high integrity uh, in their in in their source validation or whatever you want to call it it's um yeah either way thanks to wingspan tt so what do we have in this deck first let, let's take a look at the creatures um we know this guy from uh, i think this is from the guild pack set um, Assault Zeppelin, it's a Flying Trample 3-3 for 4, and uh, it was in Ancient Depth as well. There's three of, the, three of them in uh, in the default deck, uh, and that is it. You have the Four Coiling Oracles, also uh, another quote-unquote classic from the Ancient Depth. It's a very, very good card in the sense that it's a two-cost 1-1 one, one, uh, card that when it comes into play, you uh, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it into play. Otherwise, put that card into your hand. So it draws your card, and you might um, you might gain a little bit of um, uh, mana ramping. 
So very, very cool card in my opinion, and it worked really, really well in the Ancient Depth deck. Gaia Skyfolk is new to the format. Uh, it's a two cost, uh, one blue, one green, two two with flying. Nothing spectacular, but still pretty decent in my opinion. Indrik Stompowler, we know this from the. Uh, is it? Uh, let me see. It might be the Pack Instinct deck, or it might be. Yeah, I don't know. Either Pack, pack Instinct or um, uh, Ancient Wilds. Um, Think Pack Instinct, actually. It uh, it's a Simic card, as you see. It's from the Guild Pack set, and uh, it the text reads: An Indrink's Howl was destruct uh, has destructive powers much subtler than that of its uh, crushing foot. The sound is mundane, but inaudible vibrations scatter and saunter uh, magical uh, contrivances. Pretty interesting, um, at least because it leans to the law. Uh, leans up against the lawn. There's two of them, and uh, yeah, we know it all, all too well already. Law scale coatl, uh, guess based on the Quetzalcoatl of the Aztec Mayan uh, myth and and so on, um, is a uh, two-two creature for three, which has the abilities that whenever you draw a card, you may put a plus one plus one counter on law scale coatl. So basically, if nothing else, uh, it just becomes bigger every turn. I it can't be helped because you draw a card every turn, and it becomes a uh, one-one bigger uh, every turn. If you also have the, um, uh, have if you're fortunate enough to play a few uh, coiling oracles or other cards that'll draw you cards, then you pretty much make it faster. You ramp this ability uh, in a sense. Omnibion is an interesting card. It's a four, co uh, four cost three three, uh, two green, one blue, and one uh, colorless. It uh, makes it so that when you tap it, target creature becomes a three three frog until end of turn. That can work both ways. You can make uh, larger creatures of your opponent's side uh, into smaller creatures, uh, or at least for one turn. And you can make your own smaller creatures into 3-3 three, three frogs. So, yeah, pretty interesting. I'm not sure if I'm going to play with it, but it's um, it's a nice little trick. And it also kind of plays into the whole... Um, well, aside from the fact that it's a... It, it, it's a crazy weird creature uh, the kind that um, the Simic like to to construct and uh, and breed um, it it's also pretty interesting that it has abilities that uh, that affect other creatures so yeah in that sense it's very Simic like over being a myth is absolutely nuts uh, it's a five cost creature um, which has star star it's uh, it, it, its power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your hand, but at the end, uh, oh, sorry, at the beginning of your draw step, you may draw a card. So that means that it's kind of like a howling mine just for you. You draw two cards, your opponent draws one. So your your hand is going to be strengthened by the fa uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, the over over being of myth is going to be strengthened by the fact that you draw more cards. Very, very cool card, in my opinion. Protein Hulk is a little expensive, but it is absolutely nuts as well. It's a 7 cost 6-6. Six, six. When you put it into... Uh, when it is put into Graveyard from play, uh, search your library for any number of creature cards, any number of creature cards with the total converted mana cost of 6 or less, and put them into play. So basically, you can put a couple of uh, like you could put a a couple of these guys into play. You can put one of these into play. You can put a a yeah, whatever. You can like you can put three coiling oracles in, into play if you want to. Pretty insane. Very very cool card. The Simic Rackworm is a four cost um, three three. And you can basically you could just untap it by paying one blue mana. That's a nice little trick. It it, it gives you an attacker and a blocker in one. Um, so yeah, not aside from that, nothing too spectacular. But it's still still nice to be able to to tie down your opponents in your own side. And uh, as a four drop, your opponent might not have anything too big yet. <coughs> Sorry. Simic Sky Swaller is uh, another card that we know from uh, the Ancient Depth uh, pile. It is a 7 cost uh, 
pile of insanity, basically. It's a 6-6 flying trample shroud. You can't cast spells on it, but neither can your opponent. It cannot be targeted. Uh, it has flying and trample, so basically it can only be killed with combat damage, and it has to be done so in the air. Very, very difficult card to deal with. Very cool. Tight Tight Spout Tyrant is really expensive. It's a 7 cost 5-5 five five flying creature which um, has a pretty neat uh, ability in my, opponent, uh, in, in my opinion. Whenever you play a spell, return target permanent to its owner's hand. Basically, you can bounce your opponent's creatures or permanents as you see fit uh, as long as you do have the, f uh, the 8 mana to, to cast this spell. Or this uh, this creature. Trigon Predator is a three cost two three with flying. Whenever Trigon Predator deals c combat damage to a player, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment that that player controls. Another way of messing with your opponent's side and his uh, board presence, uh, board state. Um, and you'll see there's actually quite a few creatures uh, creatures with flying. Uh, at least uh, like. In the default deck, you have uh, three, you have five, let's see, du -du 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 -du. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. Ten creatures with flying. That's quite a lot for this format. Winged Coatl uh, is uh, three cost, one, one, with flash, flying, and death touch. Take care of those uh, flying creatures of your opponent's side that... Uh, that keep uh, keep messing with you, and uh, yeah, ba that's basically it. It's it's pretty nice that you're able to cast it as a as a flashed effect, um, because you'll take your opponent by surprise. Very very nice card. Uh, Wistful Selkie is a three cost two two. Whenever uh, uh, when Wistful Selkie comes into play, draw a card. Pretty basic, nothing special, but still. Um, it, it, it's, it ties in with the theme of working your way through the deck, and there I think there's a few uh, pretty nice ways of uh, of ramping your side, both in terms of mana and, and card drawing, and this is one of them. So even though it doesn't do much else as soon as it's into play, it's just a 2-2 creature, it's, um, it's not that bad, actually, it's especially for the fact that it draws you a card. Uh, we come to the enchantments now. Uh, here's um, you have three claustrophobias in the in the default deck. Uh, three cost uh, enchantment aura, and it basically ties down a creature. When claustrophobia enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature. Enchanted creature doesn't untap until uh, during its controller's untap f uh, step. So it's basically a pacifism, um, except that. Let me just check. Pacifism. Yeah, except that you can use, or uh, that creature can't use any uh, tappable abilities. It can use mana abilities that doesn't require it to tap, though. Fable of Wolf and Howl is an expensive but interesting enchantment. Whenever you play a green spell, you may put a 2 2 green wolf token into play. Uh, whenever you play a blue spell, you may put a 1 1 blue bird creature token with flying into play. Pretty interesting, and uh, it's 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 funny because it's a really expensive enchantment in in the sense that it costs six, but you get the chance to run, uh, I think three of them. So yeah, I don't know. Like they really rely on the ramping in this deck, kind of like you do in in Ancient Depth, but not to not to be able to cast those Eldrassi creatures, but to be able to. Uh, get everything working for you and so on. You still have a lot of um, much cheaper cards or creatures uh, which are quite good uh, ad adversely to uh, what you had in, um, in in the in the ancient depth deck. So I think uh, this is certainly it, it. It ties more in with the Simic uh, theme, uh, except that I would like to see more majors and and uh, researchers and so on to give you the sense that this is kind of like is it except that they're oriented around biology and uh, creating uh perfect or weird and 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 interesting uh specimens of the of of uh, enhanced nature in a sense kind of like uh 
um, evolution on steroids in a sense. Uh, the final card, oh sorry, not the final card, the final enchantment of uh, the default deck is Yabimaya's Embrace, which is kind of like mind control, except that it's really expensive, it's an 8 cost, but you don't you, you do not only control uh, enchanted creature, you you um, give that creature plus two, plus two, and it gains trample. That's completely nuts, in my opinion. So you take that really, really good creature from your opponent's side, make it much better, and you just beat his face in with it. Um, you have uh, a couple of um, instants as well. You have two Groundswell which is a one cost instant target creature gets plus two plus uh, gains plus two plus two until end of turn and it has the landfall ability of uh, if you had a land enter uh, the battlefield under your control this turn that creature gets pl plus four plus four until the end of turn instead pretty 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 cool in my opinion and then you have a really insane uh, removal card in Pungify it's a one cost blue mana uh, uh, cre uh, sorry, instant destroy target creature it can't be regenerated that creature's controller puts a 3-3 three, three green 8 creature token into play wow it's kind of like beast within except that it costs 1 <laughs> what else is there to say it's a really really great card very good very very good you can even uh, make your uh, coiling oracles into apes if if you want to do that, um, yeah, very very cool, nice nice combat trick in my opinion. Uh, you run the four Terramorphic expands just like like all the other uh, decks. Ain't uh, either it's a uh, evolving wilds or Terramorphic expands. Like all the DLC decks seems to have these uh, stupid uh, fetch lands. And then you have another classic from the Ancient Wilds deck. Uh, you have uh, two either mutation. Um, five cost, return target creature to its owner's hand and put X11 one, one green sapling cre uh, creature tokens into play where X is its converted mana cost. Very cool card. Um, it is probably the single card that gave me the most headaches in Magic 2012, but it's such a good card. And it works really, really well for the the whole Simic um, uh, theme, in my opinion. All right, let's take a look at uh, at the unlockables. Uh, I don't have uh, any information about the promo cards, uh, but I will show you the um, the unlockables here. There's uh, thir like these are the thirty unlockables that you have um, available to you when you either unlock cards by winning in uh, in the campaign or in um, by playing online you have two acidic slime which we know from uh, ancient wilds uh, the ancient wilds deck pretty good card no need to talk about we all know it very good draining whelk is a really interesting card it's it seems a little expensive until you read all of its abilities it's a six cost one one it has flash it has flying and when Draining Wealth comes into play, counter target spell, put X plus one plus one counters on Draining Wealth, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. So it's basically uh, basically a counter spell, an expensive counter spell that gives you a huge creature. Like even if you counter something small, like you're still going to get an, a, a decent flyer out of it at the same time as you counter a spell. So that's really, really cool. Uh, Gigant uh, Gigantomancer uh, is a card we know as well. I think it was in... Not entirely sure if it was... Uh, I think it was in 2012. It is definitely in this year's format. It uh, is in Ancient Wilds to the uh, extent of my memory. I think it might also be in one of the uh, Ravnica decks. Not entirely sure. But it's uh, basically an 8-cost 1-1 one, one that, uh, uh, that is able to make... Uh, all your other creatures into 7-7 seven, seven if you have enough mana for it. Jeshian Infiltrator is a 2 cost 2-2 two, two, which is unblockable. Nothing spectacular but um, I think there's there might be a card that it works really well with. I don't know. No. Uh, it doesn't matter too much. It's uh, I think it's nice and all, but um, it's a little unspectacular. It doesn't really work that well with the theme. It, it's not synergetic in any kind of sense so 
Yeah, I, I don't know why they included it. Um, maybe uh, one of you guys uh, can give me the scoop on why they would include this card, aside from just some flexibility. Low scale Quadl already talked about it. There's another one, or two, two more. Pretty good, cool, pretty cool card in my opinion. Yep. Uh, Metallic slime. There's two of them. Uh, we saw those in the Golgar deck, and uh, here they are in the Simic deck. Mumia Vig is a really cool legendary creature. He has such an amazing ability. It's a uh, it's a five cost two two. Whenever you play a green creature spell, you may search your library for a creature card and reveal it. If you do, shuffle your library and put that card on top of it. Whenever you play a blue creature spell, reveal that top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put that card into your hand. Very nice. You get to search. Um, like you get, you get a steady flow of uh, of exactly the creatures you want to. Um, in this, it it is kind of like just this card reminds me a little bit of some of the mechanics in uh, in the ancient wilds deck, uh, which is also able to fetch you the exact uh, creatures that you 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 want and that you need. Um, yeah, Multani Maro Sorcerer, uh, Maro Sorcerer is a nice card, but also a little expensive in my opinion. It's a six cost a star star. Uh, it has the power and toughness, each equal to the total number of cards in all players' hands. Really, really nice in, uh, in a two-headed giant, but uh, late game, it might not be so mu uh, such a great creature. It might just be okay. I don't know. It cannot be the target of spells uh, or abilities. Um, basically, it has Shroud. It's a it's a nice card, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, it might work for you. It might not. Uh, it, it I I don't see how it fits the theme of the deck, except maybe for the card drawing. But I think late game it's probably not gonna be that amazing. Merkfiend Leech, on the other hand, is completely cool. It's kind of it's almost as good as Balefire Leech, in my opinion. It's a five cost four four. And other green creatures and blue creatures get plus one, plus one. Untap all green and all blue creatures you control during each other player's untap step. So that makes it free for you to both attack and block each turn. Very nice. Mystic Snake is really cool as well. It's another counter spell creature. You may play Mystic Snake at any time you could play an instant. That means it has flash. When Mystic Snake comes into play, counter target spell. It's a 2-2-4 two, two, cost, so it's cheaper than the Draining Welk. But it doesn't gain the counters afterwards. But it's still, like, if they had put more of uh, the Mystic Snakes into this deck, or more uh, Draining Welks, I would definitely run them. I love counter spells, and I love counter spells that gives me something extra. And uh, they might, uh, we might see a couple of these in uh, in the promo cards as well. Omnibian, uh, yeah, two more of those. We already talked about it, so you have an option of running three of them if you want. Overbeing of Myth, you have an option of running one more. And why wouldn't you? It's just insanity on a stick. Very cool. Selkie Hedgemage is a nice little card. It's a three cost, two, two. Uh, when it comes into play, if you control two or more forests, you gain three lives uh, or life. Uh, when Selkie Hedgemage comes into play, if you control two or more islands, you may return target tap creature to its owner's hand. So it's basically um, it is basically an either adept, except that it also gives you life, especially if you if you play it at a time where you have. Uh, if, uh, where you have two forests and two islands. So if you play this on turn four, optimally you will be able to take advantage of both abilities. You have the option of running two of them. Simic Sky Swallower, uh, Sky Swallower, you have one more of these. Sour of Temptation. We all know this card. It's been in a few of the previous decks. It's a four cost uh, two two with flying, and when it comes into play, you gain control of target creature as long as Sour of Temptation remains in play. I think it was both in the um, uh, what's it called in the blue illusions uh, realm of illusions deck uh, last year in 2012, and it was also in the ancient depth deck, I believe. Vidalkin Heretic is also a very cool card. Um, 
when it deals uh, damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. It's a two cost, by the way. Uh, the only thing that's a little silly about it is that it has, it doesn't have unblockable, it doesn't have flying, it doesn't have any, like, it doesn't have any means to get through, so. Uh, it might work for you, it might not. So, like I said, you have the option of running three Fable of Wolf and Owl if you unlock them, and uh, I think it's a little expensive, but it's a really, really nice trick being able to just gain a lot of wolf tokens and a lot of uh, bird tokens uh, for just casting spells. So yeah, there's that. Quest of the Gem Blades, a two-cost enchantment. Whenever a creature you wh whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a creature, you may put a quest counter on the quest for Gem Blades. Remove a quest counter from quest for the gem blades and sacrifice it. Put four plus one plus one counters on target creature. That that is kind of the closest we come to like the Simic graft uh, mecha uh, guild mechanic from uh, the original um, uh, the original Ravnica block uh, sets. But uh, aside from that, you don't have an, a, a lot of options to uh, to deal with the counters. Um, I guess it's a nice card. It's a uh, it's a two cost way of making one of your creatures permanently plus four plus four. So that's pretty nice. There's a second Yavimaya's Embrace, also pretty good, except that it's really expensive. Snake Form is a really <laughs> funny ability. I think it's a um, three cost instant spell, and a target creature loses all abilities and becomes a 1-1 one, one green snake until end of turn. Draw a card. So, see, it draws your card, so it cycles, but at the same time, it you can make your own creature, if your opponent, uh, for example, if he casts some kind of spell where he, uh, f I don't know, uh, where he, he gains the, the, the amount of, uh, for example, if you're, if if you're attacking with your whole side and um, and your opponent has a Phyrexian Obliterator and um, he chooses to uh, block one big creature of yours, you can just cast Snake Form uh, on your creature and you only have to sacrifice one of your, your, uh, your permanents. Or you could use it to make one of your opponent's creatures smaller. Um, I, I really like this card. It's very tricksy and it's um, very funny. It also uh, plays along with the theme of being able to manipulate creatures and turn them into different um, shapes and forms and so on. I just wish there were more of this creature because I, I really like it. Either mutation you get to run one more, so that's uh, three altogether. Then you have uh, Biomantic Mastery, which is a bit expensive. It's uh, just like a lot of the other cards in this deck. Uh, it's a 7 cost sorcery and uh, it draws your card for each creature target player controls and then draw a card for each creature another target player controls. <laughs> That's a lot of cards. <laughs> That's an, a very expensive but very neat way of uh, drawing a bunch of cards uh, late game. And then you have a regrowth which is a classic. Return any card from your graveyard to your hand. So that is the Simic deck and um, I think they put a little bit too much emphasis on creatures, but at least these creatures are very tricksy. Uh, you see, like uh, f you have these uh, bubbles. It's kind of it, it's it, it it's a remnant of the this um, what's it called the graft ability. Let me show you graft. What graft is here? Uh, Aquastrand spider is is an example of a a um, a, a um, what's it called? Uh, of a Simic card with the Graft ability. It has, uh, it's a 0-0, zero, zero, Graft 2, and uh, you can move these Graft counters. Uh, Burr Grafter, nope. Uh, Cytoplast uh, Manipulator, yep, the same. This guy, so on. But it's basically like this guy comes in with six tokens on it. So it's a 6-6, six, six, but you can put these counters on other creatures uh, and gain that creature trample and so on. So, yeah, basically it's a um, it's a really nice mechanic, and it's a shame they didn't use it. Um, but what they did use uh, was, or what they did make, was a a deck with uh, more flying creatures that we have in in uh, most other decks, and with uh, 
the ability to manipulate some of your creatures, turn them into something different, um, the, the ability to sprout new creatures with uh, uh, enchantments like uh, uh, a Fable of Wolf and Owl or Sorceress, just like either mutation and so on. So it's um, it's it's very creature heavy, but it's it's that's in keeping with the law, I think, or, or keeping in line with the law. But it's also um, a little bit tricksy, and it has some uh, uh, mutatability around uh, the different cards you have, and it has a lot of card drawing effects and a bit of ramping effect in terms of uh, coiling Oracle. So um, it might be a little bit faster than, for example, the the Isid deck, which I think also relies on on um, on 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 creatures and uh, well, also direct damage, of course, but uh, on on bigger creatures or bigger spells and being able to to manipulate your opponent's board state and your own board state and so on. So I think this deck might be it might come out as a bit more successful and it might not be hated in the same way as Ancient Depth is ha uh, was hated for its timiness, inherent timiness. Um, so yeah, basically that's the that's the Sky and Scale deck, the, the Simic deck, which we'll see on um, Wednesday next week, the Wednesday the 7th, I believe it is. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I sincerely hope you liked it. Uh, once again, I want to thank uh, Wingspan TT and uh, Top Tier Tactics for uh, providing me with the information and um, uh, if if you want to read more, if you want to see other people's opinions about the decks uh, definitely go check out the, the link that I put in my description which leads you to the Top Tier Tactics um, um, the, 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 um, the article on on uh, these two decks, uh, the Act of War Boros deck, which I talked about in the previous video, and the the this deck, the Sky and Scale Simic deck. So, I hope you liked it. Uh, I'll see you later.